Hello, hi, I am Dr. Manoj Jayapath. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am a surgeon by profession and I do a lot of weight loss procedures at Kerala, India. Today I am going to talk to you about the problems of overweight, what are the treatment options and how do you go about it. So, uh, how do you define an obesity? Obesity is defined by calculating body mass index. Uh, so what is body mass index you divide the weight in kilogram by height in meters twice that is weight by height square so uh, normal bmi it's uh, less than 25 so if it is more than 30 uh, you calculate this is grade one obesity so it's he's basically mildly obese if your weight is bmi is more than 35 then it's class two obesity and uh, more than uh, 40 it is class 3 severe obesity so a person who is having obe who is having obesity or overweight what are the problems he can come across so overweight is a big problem it will cause premature death so why is, i say so because starting from the cardiac illness you will can have hypertension that is increased blood pressure diabetes these two may add on to your cardiac disease they can have some uh, myocardial infarction or heart arrhythmias uh, sometimes uh, these diabetes hypertension uh, along with this cardiac disease and hypertriglyceridemia that is your cholesterol levels are high this forms a metabolic patient what exactly is metabolic patient you have all these problems you have increased cost increased sugars increased cholesterol and increased pressure uh, added on to a uh, a cardiac illness hypothyroidism can occur uh, that is your thyroid function can be less in case of obesity and you, in fact obesity hypothyroidism is a cause of obesity also then you have other illness like lung conditions various lung conditions you may be snoring a lot at night and the snoring is very uh, peculiar sometimes you snore snore and at the middle of your snore you stop suddenly you wake up this is known as obstructive sleep apnea syndrome very dangerous it is it predisposed to stroke it predisposed to cardiac illness increased bp that uh, causes premature death pulmonary hypertension there's a pressure in your lungs will increase so these are the complications which can happen with severe obesity uh, there's, a, there's a pulmonary complications they have other complications like knee pain joint pain i mean so because uh, you see you are carrying a lot of weight and this weight is getting transmitted to your knee joints knee joints are primarily affected definitely other joints are also affected and certain cancers for example esophageal junction cancer yes so there's esophagus is here stomach is there there's a junction in that you can have cancer so uh, reflux disease so acid starts refluxing so such uh, complications definitely can occur with obesity and definitely a reduced quality of life is a big problem you can't move about you can't move around as you think as you wish and your shirt chain shirt size will be more you won't get a proper uh, dressing uh, that that also is a big problem so likewise sometimes uh, uh, what happens is the carbon dioxide levels in your blood goes up very high so once you walk there is no enough oxygen in your blood and it produces vertigo there's benign intracranial hypertension the pressure in your brain increases and a lot many complications of severe obesity so it's not a very good thing to have as very severe obesity so what are the treatment options yes if it is less than 30 uh, diet and exercise got a big role you can uh, definitely uh, uh, reduce weight but after 30 it's a difficult task for the patient to reduce weight because you have uh, joint pains you become big gasping while you do exercise not many issues so uh, in such conditions and you have all these problematic dis disorders together like if you have uncontrolled diabetes you how much of medicines you take your diabetes is not getting under control even after taking your insulin it is not getting under control then you have to opt for uh, surgical procedures that is like uh, severe obesity uh, and obesity with uh, other morbidities then comorbidities then you can undergo you have to undergo surgery so what are the surgical options uh, definitely diet and uh, exercise plays a role but after a particular weight it will be difficult to do a diet and so that's why i'm um, considering surgery so uh, there are various laparoscopic procedures available which are being routinely done uh, one is a sleeve gastrectomy the second one is a Rowan by gastric bypass 
then uh, there is a mini gastric bypass then uh, bpd biliopancreatic diversion there are not many surgical options it all depends on what kind of obesity you are what all are the problems you are facing if a patient uh, who is not having any of the problems high end problems like uh, coronary disease and other uh, lung conditions and all sleeve gastrectomy will give you a very good uh, weight loss sleeve gastrectomy is a very simple procedure not very doesn't have much complications as other high end surgeries so what you do is you cut a portion of stomach and remove that so your size of the stomach is get reduced to around 100 or 100 ml around 120 ml that is what sleeve gastrectomy is there are some inherent problems with sleeve gastrectomy intraoperative problems can have bleeding uh, maybe bleeding or injury to other organs after surgery maybe some bleeding can happen the sta- staple lines you divide the stomach using staplers sometimes staple line it, it will give away producing leak so that is one another complication otherwise uh, there are very very minor complication mortality after uh, sleeve gastrectomy is very minimal so that gives a very good long term control of uh, your sugars and uh, pressures but international studies have shown that it's not that effective as a bypass for a uh, very long term control this is around 10 years weight control you may tend to regain weight if the patient continues to eat the other surgical option is uh, rowen way gastric bypass in which you make your stomach divide the stomach and make it a small pouch around 100 120 ml or even lesser than that then you divide the intestine uh, intestine small intestine into two and take one portion and attach to this pouch which you have already you made the stomach pouch small so that the mixing up of the digestive juice and uh, your food happens in a very small segment of uh, intestine so that will reduce the amount of calories which is going on rowen way gastric bypass also is a very routinely uh, performed procedure but it needs a close post operative follow up you need to take vitamins for quite some time uh, calcium for some time and uh, iron so iron deficiency calcium deficiency vitamin deficiencies are a common factor with the malabsorptive procedure the malabsorptive procedure i mean it, what i mean to say is it reduces absorption there is another uh, surgery called um, mini gastric bypass it's again something like a sleeve gastrectomy combined with a, a bypass that also gives a very good weight loss uh in fact uh, weight loss is small in many patients you may have malabsorption you have to be very careful in performing such surgeries so uh, but you need to have a very long term uh, uh, follow up with the surgeon which uh, performed because vitamin deficiency is quite pronounced micronutrient deficiency is also well pronounced in uh, case of an uh, mini gastric bypass then you have biliopancreatic diversion that's uh, another uh, high end surgery these are the few surgeries which you can perform for uh, morbid obesity so uh, how do you go about it once you think that you are morbidly obese you can weigh your own bmi you better go and consult a surgeon they will give you uh, the suggestions if the surgery is planned you have to do the blood investigations and an endoscopy we do it routinely an endoscopy here before surgery and ultrasound scan to assess your liver whether you have liver got lot of fat or not and with all these assessments cardiac assessment if needed and uh, anesthetic uh, fitness for doing performing such surgeries and after that you will be taken to the theater it is done by minimally invasive keyhole technique it's painless technique after surgery you may be kept in icu for a day in case of bypass or uh, you will be shifted to the room in case of a sleeve gastrectomy otherwise you may be the one or two days in the uh, intensive care unit after that you will be discharged with the uh, adequate advices given to you and you have to be in close follow up with the dietitian they will advise you so uh, after surgery what percent of weight loss you can expect in case of bypass it is 60 to 70 even 80% of excess body weight you can lose by bypass sleeve gastrectomy is not that very intensive around 50 to 60% you can lose immediate uh, weight loss is around 42 you know my experience is 42 around uh 60% of excess body weight uh, so this uh, mini gastric bypass again is a good weight loss procedure so what happens in long term what happens in long term is sleeve gastrectomy such patients tend to gain weight so you have to choose the patient very carefully those patients who are well dedicated uh, for the weight loss procedures such procedure such patients can undergo sleeve gastrectomy if they are not that well uh, ed- dedicated to a weight loss procedure then a bypass 
will do good and uh, especially if they are keen for a very long follow up then uh, definitely uh, bypass should be suggested there are a few suggestions for uh, the bariatric surgery so we routinely do it here without much problems so thanks for watching my video uh, please send the link to your friends and uh, please uh, share the video with those who are needed and also please subscribe my channel so that you can get the new videos at time thank you thank you once again